Getting CRPS can be a tough diagnosis. I know when I was first diagnosed, first we were excited, yes, we know what's wrong with me after a few months of going to different doctors and trying different treatments. And then when we found out what CRPS was, it was a little bit, okay, where do we go from here? Complex Regional Pain Syndrome, it used to be called RSD, Reflex Sympathetic Dystrophy. So complex Regional Pain Syndrome, also now is known as CRPS, is a complex neurological pain syndrome. And the name comes from, the complex part of it is because it's, although it's better understood now, it's not really well understood as many pain disorders are not. It also has a complex presentation in terms of pain is the most common symptom of CRPS um, and it's a level of pain that is out of proportion if somebody had an injury with, which started the disorder it's way out of proportion to the original injury. Most people present with severe levels of pain on pain scales 7, 8, 9, 10 out of 10, really really severe pain. Other common symptoms of CRPS include Physical changes, for example, if somebody had the disorder in their hand, they may have um, tremors, some movement disorders, tremors, spasms. Um, other com common symptoms in include physical symptoms um, that basically the underlying problem is the blood supply. So they can have an increase or a decrease in that, and that can show through sweating and feeling very hot, it can show through being very cold, sort of having the less blood supply, being very cold, um, clammy. Um, so those are some of the common symptoms that patients might present with. It's not a diagnosis that is, um, that there's a, a medical test that you can do a lab work or a diagnosis that gives you a clear cut um, definition of complex regional pain syndrome. It's typically a series of conditions or symptoms that are clinically put together by a physician. There really isn't a lot of information that is um, learned in school about treating complex regional pain syndrome. And for me, that's a passion, being able to educate other clinicians on how to initiate a treatment program for patients, how to progress a treatment for program, a program for patients, how to educate the patient on what they should be feeling, how the pain is going to impact them, what to expect next, and then how this can change their life, how it, they can return to their normal daily activities, how they can begin to move again in a manner that is not painful or not as painful, how they can begin to uh, do all of the little daily activities that make their life um, complete, and how this can really impact their overall lifestyle and ability to um, just enjoy their life again. Educating your patient is very important and you need to educate the patient on a variety of levels. So many patients get this diagnosis from their physician but they don't understand the diagnosis. They may have gone to the internet, they may have looked up a variety of different things and there's a lot of information out there and some of it's conflicting and some of it is confusing. Well actually a lot of it is confusing um, and some of it is scary to think about having a, a pain diagnosis that could last forever um, or that is taking over your life so entirely. Something that may have uh, occurred from a simple injury that you would never expect has had such a great impact on your life. So beginning with that step, understanding and helping your patient to understand what the diagnosis is, what the symptoms are, what they can expect from that. Um, and then really going into that piece of understanding what the therapist's role is and how that person is going to help you. Um, and the most significant piece that comes across in therapy and that you really need to work on with your patient is that as a therapist, I'm not doing it for you. I'm teaching you how to do this for yourself. I cannot move your arm or move your leg or you know apply a therapy technique to you to make you better i can teach you the skills that you can learn to manage your pain to increase your ability to move to help you deal with the the pain that you're having and all of the the different um, limitations that have occurred because of that 
Um, and that's, that's key, um, empowering the patient that they're actually going to be taking care of themselves. Um, in many cases with many patients, they kind of disassociate from their affected body part because they've been dealing with this for such a long period of time. What used to be, you know, the, the hand that you always use to do everything, your dominant side, whatever you did, now becomes this appendage or, or attachment that's that's you're stuck with that you don't really know what to do with and it doesn't feel like it's necessarily part of you anymore so part of that education is helping the patient get back in touch with this aspect of their body that it seems so foreign to them um, and then the other part of education is really helping the patient to understand what is going to happen during the therapy process uh, in a therapy evaluation it's important for the therapist to find out a variety of things about um, how complex regional pain syndrome is affecting the patient. It's important to understand where the pain is located, what exacerbates the pain, what makes the pain worse, um, what makes the pain better, if there are uh, particular activities that increase uh, pain levels or make things more difficult to perform. Um, and in addition in to that information, then the therapist will also take a look at a variety of other functional tasks that a patient may perform. So things like looking at overall grip strength using a dynamometer, which will measure um, how strong a grip is in right hand versus um, how strong the grip is in the left hand. Um, in addition to that, you may look at um, using a pinch meter to assess thumb pinch or finger pinch and the strength of the, the fingers in, on one hand versus the other hand. Um, or using a goniometer to assess range of motion, looking at the individual joint and measuring how far the joint moves on the affected side, in addition to moving to measuring the non-affected side and seeing where the differences are and what approach would be best to help um, normalize the two sides.